Bernie Sanders spoke at George Washington University and he gave a speech about democratic socialism. Now, when I initially learned that he would be speaking about democratic socialism, I assumed that he'd be saying largely the same thing he said in the past. You know, I'm a democratic socialist in the sense that I believe we need a strong social safety net. We need to make sure that people have political and economic rights. But what we got here was much more than that. Certainly he touched on, touched on that, but what Bernie Sanders delivered here was by far the most comprehensive, profound speech I think he's ever delivered. Like this might literally be the best speech he's ever given. Because not only did he describe what he means by democratic socialism, but what he did is he talked about the way and really the history of socialism and how it's been used as a boogeyman to scare the masses and get them to not support policies that are in their best interests. And on top of that, he explained how his version of socialism is different than Donald Trump's version of socialism, because Donald Trump supports socialism, he just supports corporate socialism. And what he did that I think was really important was he tied democratic socialism to combating the rise of fascism, because during the Great Depression, what FDR did to fight extremism and fascism due to economic desperation was he impl implemented these policies that are social democratic. So what Bernie Sanders is saying is we're seeing this again right now. And if we truly want to stop fascism and curtail radicalization and desperation, we need to guarantee people a set of basic rights, a second bill of rights. So what this speech is about is him essentially laying out what FDR did to stop the rise of fascism and how it relates to now. And he's basically pledging to continue FDR's vision. Now, this speech is over 40 minutes long and I can't possibly play all of it for you. And I will show you a clip. But with that being said, before I play a clip for you, I have a pretty long clip. It's like 10 minutes long. So you're watching a quarter of it. I would highly, highly encourage you to watch the entire speech. It's that good. I found it very difficult to kind of prepare a version that was more condensed because what he's saying here, every word of it is extremely important. So I'll link to the full speech down below. I would encourage you to watch that as opposed to the more condensed version, but I'm gonna play a clip for you, 10 minutes long. If you've already seen it, you can fast forward past that. But when we come back, I'm gonna talk about the implications here. Across the globe, the movement toward oligarchy runs parallel to the growth of authoritarian regimes like Putin in Russia, Xi in China, Mohammed bin Salman in Saudi Arabia, Rodrigo Duterte in the Philippines, Herr Bolsonaro in Brazil, and Viktor Orban in Hungary, among others. These leaders meld corporatist, corporatist economics with xenophobia and authoritarianism. They redirect popular anger about inequality and declining economic conditions into violent rage against minorities, whether they are immigrants, racial minorities, religious minorities, or the LGBT community. And to suppress the set, they are cracking down on democracy and human rights. In the United States, of course, we have our own version of this movement, which is being led by President Trump and many of his Republican allies who are attempting to divide our country up and attack these very same communities. Today, we are all rightly repulsed by the sight of neo-Nazis and Klansmen openly marching in Charlottesville, Virginia, and we are horrified by houses of worship being shot up by right-wing terrorists. But on February 20th, 1939, over 20,000 Nazis held a mass rally, not in Berlin, not in Rome, but in Madison Square Garden, in front of a 30-foot banner of George Washington bordered with swastikas in New York City. New York City. But back then, those American extremists could not replicate the success 
of their authoritarian brethren across the ocean. Because we in the United States, thank God, made a different choice than Europe did in responding to the era's social and economic crises. We rejected the ideology of Mussolini and Hitler, and we instead embraced the bold and visionary leadership of Franklin Delano Roosevelt, then the leader of the progressive wing of the Democratic Party. <laughs> Together with organized labor, leaders in the African-American community and progressives inside and outside the Democratic Party, Roosevelt led a transformation of the American government and the American economy. Like today, the quest for transformative change was opposed by big business, by Wall Street, by the political establishment, by the Republican Party, and by the conservative wing of FDR's own Democratic Party. And he faced the same scare tactics then that we experience today. Red baiting, xenophobia, racism, and anti-Semitism. And Roosevelt concluded, and I quote, never before in all our history have these forces been so united against one candidate as they stand today. They are unanimous in their hate for me, and I welcome their hatred. <laughs> President Roosevelt was reviled by the oligarchs of his time, who berated these extremely popular programs as socialism. Similarly, in the 1960s, when President Lyndon Johnson brought about Medicare, Medicaid, and other extremely popular and important programs, he was also viciously attacked by the ruling class of this country. And here is the point. It is no exaggeration to state that not only did FDR's agenda improve the lives of millions of Americans, but the New Deal was enormously popular politically and helped defeat far-right extremism. Today, we have a demagogue in the White House who, for cheap political gain, is attempting to deflect the attention of the American people away from the real crises that we face and instead is doing what demagogues always do, and that is to divide people up and legislate hatred. This is a president who supports brutal family separations, border walls, Muslim bans, anti-LGBT policies, deportations, and voter suppression. It is my very strong belief that the United States must reject that path of hatred and divisiveness and instead find the moral conviction to choose a different path, a higher path, a path of compassion, justice, and love. And that is the path that I call democratic socialism. Franklin Delano Roosevelt helped create a government that made transformative progress in protecting the needs of working families. Today, in the second decade of the 21st century, we must take up the unfinished business of the New Deal and carry it to completion. But now we must take the next step forward and guarantee every man, woman, and child in our country basic economic rights, the right to quality health care. The right to as much education as one needs to succeed in our society. The right to a good job that pays a living wage. The right to affordable housing. 
the right to a secure retirement. And the right to live in a clean environment. We must recognize that in the 21st century, in the wealthiest country in the history of the world, economic rights are human rights. And that is what I mean by democratic socialism. Truman said, and I quote, socialism is the epithet they have hurled at every advance the people have made in the last 20 years. And this is Truman. This is a quote from Harry Truman. Socialism is what they called social security. Socialism is what they called farm price supports. Socialism is what they called bank deposit insurance. Socialism is what they called the growth of free and independent labor organizations. Socialism is their name for almost anything that helps all of the people, end quote, Harry Truman. While President Trump and his fellow oligarchs attack us for our support of democratic socialism, they don't really oppose all forms of socialism. <laughs> they may hate democratic socialism because it benefits working people, but they absolutely love corporate socialism that enriches Trump and other billionaires. And that is the difference between Donald Trump and me. He believes in corporate socialism for the rich and powerful, I believe in a democratic socialism that works for the working families of this country. In 1944, FDR proposed an economic bill of rights, but he died a year later and was never able to fulfill that vision. Our job 75 years later is to complete what Roosevelt started. And that is why today, I am proposing a 21st century economic bill of rights. My friends, these are my values, and that is why I call myself a democratic socialist. At its core is a deep and abiding faith in the American people to peacefully and democratically enact the transformative change that will create shared prosperity, social equality, and true freedom for all. Thank you very much. Everything he said there is crucial. It's absolutely crucial. When you have these times where large multinational corporations and oligarchs assume so much wealth and as a result, you know, subsequently power and influence due to their, their wealth, people get increasingly desperate and they often become radicalized. They end up getting exploited by a demagogue who preys on their desperation and who scapegoats women and minorities and immigrants. And that same thing that happened during the Great Depression in the United States and around Europe is happening again. So what FDR did was he gave us the blueprint. He gave us what we need to defeat fascism in order to stop fascism and stop the rise of these right-wing demagogues. You've got to cut off the source of what makes the popularity or the rise or potential rise of these demagogues possible in the first place. And that is mass disenchantment with the establishment, economic desperation. If you can stop that, then you can stop the rise of right-wing demagogues. And the ruling class, they don't care that fascism is on the rise. So Bernie Sanders also describes here, you didn't see this, but how, you know, there were numerous examples of this socialist boogeyman being invoked. When Truman proposed a nationalized healthcare system, you know, 
Those that drafted it were demonized as literal communist sympathizers who were following in the footsteps of Moscow. You know, when the Children's Health Insurance Program was proposed, it was called a step towards socialism by the Heritage Foundation. So you've got to understand they're trying to scare you. And they use socialism as a boogeyman to scare you. So what this speech demonstrated to me is Bernie Sanders is the only person running for president who gets this, who actually knows how to defeat fascism. Stop mass disenchantment with the establishment. Stop desperation. Give people a chance, the opportunity to be successful and move up and move up the economic ladder. And that's how you do it. That's how you do it. It's that simple, but nobody else gets it. Nobody else sees what FDR did and wants to continue his vision. Not even other progressives in the race, so-called progressives like Elizabeth Warren. Because look at this tweet from Edward Isaac Dovier. When I told Warren that Sanders is giving a speech today saying democratic socialism is the only way, she shook her head and laughed. When I asked Harris, she said, huh? When I asked Bennett, I don't think the American people know what that means. So, I mean, you expect someone like Kamala Harris to say that. You expect Michael Bennett to say that. But someone who purports to be a progressive, who claims that she's on our side, to laugh? This should make it very clear to everyone. It's Bernie. It's always been Bernie. Because let me remind you that during Donald Trump's State of the Union, when he declared that America will never be a socialist nation, Elizabeth Warren stood up and applauded him. She stood up and she applauded that fascist. It's always been Bernie. Regardless, if he wins or if he loses, we will all look back at this moment. Historians will see that Bernie Sanders was the one ticket out from the pain and economic anxiety that everyone is experiencing. Bernie Sanders was the one person who would serve as the antithesis to fascism and right-wing demagoguery. So, again, if you didn't take my advice and watch, you know, the full speech, do yourself the favor and watch the full speech. Bernie Sanders lays it all out as clear as day. He knows exactly what to do to get our country on track. What he does in America could reverberate around the world. Other countries could emulate his style of democratic socialism, even if it's not technically democratic socialism and it is more accurately described as, you know, social democracy. Still, Bernie Sanders is the one person who can actually get us on the right trajectory. So are you going to go with someone who's only progressive when it's politically expedient, like Elizabeth Warren? Are you going to go with someone who assumes that label only because they know that they need to win an election? Or are you going to go with someone who's telling you, clear as day, I want to be the next FDR. We saw what he did. I want to do that for you. Help me help you. The choice is clear. It's got to be Bernie.